Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing Dying Light Enhanced Edition for the PS4. Dying Light is an open world first person survival horror game developed by Techland. The Enhanced Edition features the following an expansion pack that takes place after the events of the main game and is essentially Dying Light 1.5. You also get the Bozak Horde which unlocks a new area in the map, it's the Stadium and I'll go into both of those expansions later on. The game is set in Haran, a fictional Middle Eastern city where an outbreak has infected the population and it's turned them into these flesh-eating zombies, you know, the usual drill. So you play as Kyle Crane, Kyle is an undercover agent, he's sent there to investigate this quarantine zone. The main villain, apart from the infected, is Rice, a generic bad guy, you know, you've got several run-ins that you'll have with him during the main story. He's pretty bog-standard villain, it's, it's, you know, he's not very complex. The game features a day-night cycle and at night things really do get pretty scary because you get these feral zombies lurking around and they will chase you down and infect other zombies and they will chase you as well so it's absolutely terrifying at night. One of the main features in Dying Light is the use of parkour, which is basically free running. You can run on rooftops, you can jump from ledge to ledge, you can climb up buildings and it's just a very fluid and dynamic system for traversing the environment. And the game also features melee and ranged combat, crafting, upgrading weapons and lots of looting in all the different game sectors. So what is the game like to play? Well, the first thing to say is the parkour system is really fun to use and it's just a great way of getting around the city. However, with the game being first person, it might cause a problem for any gamer who suffers from motion sickness, as the camera bobbing effect is a little overused and it's, in, it's kind of there in every action you do, even from opening a box to, to using your melee weapon, it's just all the time. So the first time I played this game, I just gave up after a few sessions. I think I did about five or six hours because it just made me want to throw up because I have a very, very mild case of motion sickness. However, I did find a remedy within the menu system. If you turn off the chromatic aberration and you lower the right analog stick movement speed to the level you can see on the screen now, that will make the experience bearable. But if you do have an extreme case of motion sickness, you may not be able to play this game at all. Unfortunately, you can't turn off the motion blur effect or adjust the field of view. Those are options that would have really been helpful to make the game more easy to access for other gamers. But anyway, I still managed to play it and I'm very, very glad that I did. It's a terrifying city to explore, especially at night when the feral zombies come out. And those moments when they find you and you go on these mad chases with flashlight, parkour, chaos, it's really, really exhilarating. You can just sleep through the nights if you want though, but your stats will improve faster at night, so if you go out for night runs, everything you do will be multiplied, so it's a quick way of getting your character more advanced and advancing up the skill tree. As I said, your stats will improve by every action you do in that category, so the more you parkour, your agility will improve, the more you fight, the more your power will improve, so it's very intuitive and I do like those systems because it it makes sense, if you do something more, you'll get better at it. So the level up system is very good. To survive in Dying Light, you need to loot. You need to loot houses, trash cans, bodies, unlock chests with the lock picking mechanic. Basically, loot everything because you need lots of things to survive. The game has a large variety of weapons that are available throughout the city. You can modify these weapons and you can add upgrades. And these upgrades add effects like electrify or poison to the weapon that you've added the upgrade to. It's one of the most fun parts of the game, using all sorts of different objects to bash in the zombies, but you can also use ranged weapons like molotovs, ninja stars, and later on in the game, a little bit later, you will find handguns, rifles, shotguns, but you know, that doesn't come right at the beginning. Your melee weapons will not last forever, so that's one thing to consider. They can be repaired, but only three times or five times, depending on the quality of the weapon. And once it's done, you have to scrap that weapon. I guess it does make sense, but it is a little bit annoying because, you know, you do get attached to that special golf club of death. It adds to the game loop, and there is always another weapon out there to be found, so, you know, it's not a big issue. The game has a large variety of enemies, but in the beginning, you wouldn't think that. At first, you just encounter these George Romero type zombies. They're very slow and they're very easy to avoid. 
But if you get caught in a narrow space with a big horde of them, you might have a big problem. But parkour usually will let you get out of those situations pretty easily. As you progress, you'll encounter more variations such as spitters, behemoths, exploders, feral night zombies, and these kind of ones that have just turned and they're kind of more human so they can run and they can climb as well. So your parkour will not save you. You also have to deal with human adversaries and the melee fights with humans are honestly some of the most brutal and intense battles in the game. You know, there were certain parts in a building where I was in an interior, I didn't have any guns, I just had like melee weapons and it was like fighting in a phone booth. It was so small and narrow spaces, but it was just really, really intense and very exciting. Noise and light are noticed, so you do have to consider both of those when you're sneaking around, whether it be daytime, interiors, or nighttime. But you do have a UV light, which comes in handy during the nighttime with some of the zombies. You can rest at night in the safe houses, but you do need to unlock those. You can visit communities, you can get side missions, bounties, or you can just buy and sell goods from the traders. Some other interesting features are using zombie guts as camouflage. You can play as a zombie in be the zombie mode, which is pretty cool. And you can also play the main campaign in online co-op. So there's plenty to offer in the main campaign, but the enhanced edition does also feature the following. The following basically takes place after the events of the main campaign. So it's hard to explain exactly what happens without ruining it. But what I will say is it's set in a very, very large open map, a lot larger than the main game. It's a little more open and it's rural and you have vehicles and new items, new features, and it's just a very nice continuation of the main game and it adds a lot of new features that just make it feel fresh and it's really worth playing, but I can't say a lot more than that. The other addition is the Bozak Horde. Bozak is a psychopath who is based in the Haran Stadium and the Bozak Horde is accessible through your safe house. Basically, it's a stadium with lots of things to deal with, zombies, you have to survive a horde, you have to beat challenges, and if you complete the entire horde, you'll be rewarded with an epic weapon that will really help you throughout the main game. I mean, it's not the best part of the enhanced edition, you know, the following is the standout element. The Bozak Horde is okay. If you never played it, I don't think you'd really miss out on too much, but it's, it's another little bit extra if you want to experience it, but it's not the best part of the game. So overall, the enhanced edition, it's got great content, it's got great value for money, and you have the main game and a sort of mini sequel and some other bits and pieces. So it's, you know, full of value for gamers. Graphically, the game still stands up against any of the newer releases in 2019. The city looks great and it's well designed, it's well structured and it has that real city feel to it. The day and night cycle, they really change the environments visually and the nights do look great, especially when you're exploring using flashlight or UV light, it's super, super creepy. The ragdoll animations of the zombies, they are hilarious and when you kick them off a rooftop in particular, and you, it just feels very realistic and weird and like you can kick zombies into spiked things along the streets, you know, it's just it's graphically, it's got a nice feel to it, the ragdoll effect. Overall, it's, it's a very beautiful game to look at. The zombies are good, the city's good, the game on the whole looks good. The audio is also very impressive. The main theme music feels like a kind of a modern interpretation of the Dawn of the Dead soundtrack from way back when. All the music, it's just very, very suited. It really adds to the mood, in particular the kind of tense and dramatic moments. It's kind of classic horror music. The city ambience is very detailed and you, when you play it with headphones and you can really appreciate those small details the developers have added and it really does help you immerse into each location. The voice acting, however, I'd say is kind of par. It's not amazing, but the, the main character does a good job. He's a little bit hammy, but the other characters, they hit and miss. Sometimes they really nail it, and other times it's a bit like a uh, typical computer game audio, like just doesn't quite carry the weight, but it's good and it's bad in at times. Okay, so what is good and what is bad about the game? What's good? The game creates the sense of being in an apocalypse as well as any other game I've played. The city is well constructed and exploring on foot or via the parkour system is really challenging and it's very interesting. The game is terrifying and very atmospheric. The zombies are great and the variety of foes really do keep you on your toes. The looting and the crafting system is simple to understand and very easy to use. The following and the Bozak Horde add more depth to the experience. The visuals and the audio are top notch. You can play online co-op. The melee fights in tight environments are super exciting and very intense. And overall, it's just one of the best zombie games I've played since Dead Island. What's bad? 
A lot of gamers will get motion sickness due to the overzealous camera work. The overall narrative is a little bit convoluted and it doesn't make a great deal of sense most of the time. The story its a little bit of a non-starter and some of the set pieces in the game are very annoying and they do feel like that you're just being trolled. Okay, so what is the verdict? Dying Light Enhanced Edition is a very good game with some minor issues, but on the whole it's just an enjoyable and satisfying experience. The parkour feature is an excellent way to get around, but it would have been nice if the developers had put a little bit more thought into the motion issues, as even people without motion sickness are going to feel nauseous playing this at times because it's very overzealous, it's like it doesn't feel like how a real person would move their head in any situation, it's like one of those little toys you get at the back of your car where the head's always bobbing left and right, that's what this game feels like, the camera, it could have been a lot better. You know, you can get around it, but hopefully with Dying Light 2 coming soon, they will be more considerate to the majority of gamers and make the game have more accessibility for every gamer rather than just people who can take that kind of stuff. So my score for Dying Light Enhanced Edition is 8 out of 10. It's an enjoyable experience and a well-crafted game. I had a good time playing it. The main story I really enjoyed, well, I enjoyed playing it. I'm not saying the story was enjoyable. There were good moments, there were moments where you were like, oh, that's quite powerful. And there were moments where you're like, oh, please shut up, get on with it. But the actual process of playing the game, exploring the city, doing the combat, all that, the play, the gameplay in this game is really good. Okay, that was the review. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.